Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the second day morning session. I am uh, Jung Hyuk Park uh, from Seoul, chairing uh, this session. So we have uh, Dieter van den Blicken from uh, Boadiji University in Istanbul as our uh, second lecturer. Uh, he's going to lecture us on the uh, one over C expansion of uh, gravity. Dieter, are you ready? Yes, uh, thank you for the introduction. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, please. I, will, I should start by thanking the organizers, but uh, I will thank the other organizers. Uh, so first of all, for inviting me to be an organizer, and then also for asking me to, uh, to give the lectures. Um, okay, so um, it's a little hard to gauge uh, the audience, uh, so I don't know how, big, how many people are familiar or not. So, but I, because it's supposed to be uh, introductory lectures, I decided to hopefully keep it quite uh, basic today okay so i'll try to give kind of a, an introduction from the beginning and then towards the end also i hope to of course talk about some of the uh, interesting uh, recent uh, developments um, okay um, my talk will not so much be a continuation of jan's uh, lectures yesterday rather i would say it's, it's in some sense complementary to it uh, in the following uh, two ways uh, so first of all, Jan um, explicitly said that he was only going to talk about uh, geometry and not about dynamics, okay, so not uh, about uh, what's actually deciding uh, what this geometry, uh, how it's evolving or, or what the physical geometry is supposed to be. So today, actually, uh, the main focus will be on dynamics. So again, some geometry, etc. will show up, but uh, we will always be motivated by dynamics. In particular, by that unique uh, non relativistic gravitational dynamics that uh, falls out of uh, general relativity. Okay. Um, that's uh, the first thing. Uh, a second thing is that um, Jan uh, worked from the beginning in well, what we could call the first order formalism, meaning uh, with few binds or local frames, which is very much adapted to his uh, gauging procedure. So today I will not actually uh, work in the field by formalism, rather I will work in, let's say, second order formalism where we have a metric or at least analog uh, of a metric, so a two index uh, a tensor. Okay, um, and uh, well, why? Because again, well, typically the standard discussion of GR is just done in terms of a metric, not in terms of field bias, and so I'll just, you know, try to connect the standard connection of GR, uh, the standard formation of GR. Of course, everything I will be talking about uh, can be also re expressed in terms of uh, field binds. And um, well, in the literature, um, you can find uh, that in, in full detail. Okay, so this is just a matter of perspective. This is not a matter of principle. Um, so, in that sense, I think it's nice, it's complementary. You are seeing kind of uh, both uh, approaches. Okay. So, um, right, so now, so for those that have really no idea what this is about, so let me kind of just. Uh, First, before I say anything else, uh, sketch the main idea just to make sure that you are in the right lecture or uh, somehow, uh, yeah, if this actually does interest you. Um, okay, so the main idea is the following. So let's take a metric uh, G mu nu uh, solution to uh, the Einstein equations. Could be the vacuum Einstein equations, or this could be Einstein equations with some other. Okay. Um, well, the actual physical Einstein equations, uh, well, if you actually write out and put in dimensional physical constants, you will see that the speed of light C will appear there, for example, on the right hand side uh, for the energy momentum tensor. Or also, if you're going to express the metric in terms of physical, let's say, coordinates, meaning, well, some spatial coordinates, which typically have dimension of length, but then also a time coordinate, which has a dimension of time. Then the line element or the metric will have to involve, you know, here or there, the parameter C speed of light just by dimensional analysis. Okay, so in general, uh, actually, this metric, okay, will depend on the parameter C, which physically can be identified with the speed of light. Okay, um, and so the idea, so we're here, you can see, is it for us the speed of light? Okay. So again, uh, for those that thought that this was going to be a talk about conformal field theory and central charges, I'm very sorry. C here is uh, the speed of light. Um, okay. And then the idea is very simple. So, again, uh, this is, again, C is dimensionless, but still, let's for a moment think of it as a, an abstract uh, mathematical parameter. So, if it's very large, then we can expand uh, in, well, 1 over C which is some small parameter 
where epsilon gauge is much smaller than that. Okay, um, right. And basically, now that will be the idea. Um, okay, and of course, well, you can do this in two ways. So you could start from a solution of Einstein's equation and expand to find the you know, expanded theory, or, and this is in some sense, of course, the slightly more interesting goal is that you could say, let me expand an unknown metric and the Einstein equations, and then actually try this to you I and mean, use this to find a series solutions uh, to the Einstein equations. In particular, maybe you can truncate the series uh, at some finite order so that you get an approximation uh, to, uh, to GR. Okay, so you can try to truncate the series at finite order. And then you will get some approximation to GR, which, well, could be interesting or useful for various reasons. I'll say a little bit more about it. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Now, so far, okay, I called, uh, you know, uh, this, I introduced this letter C. I said it's the speed of light. But, you know, from at, at this level, I mean, C could be any your favorite parameter that you want to assume to be large. Okay, so now what is special about this expansion? What identifies C as a speed of light? So um, what, let's say, identifies C as a speed of light is uh, the precise and I will talk about this in detail, of course, uh, today. Uh, assumptions on how it can appear. Okay, so we will not allow arbitrary uh, C dependence for this metric. Okay, so we will make some assumptions on how this metric can uh, depend on C. Uh, and well, these exactly these assumptions correspond to our physical intuition that this parameter is the speed of, of light as we know okay uh, so again i'll talk about that a bit more later and so as a result so the fact and again that this parameter c that we're expanding is really the speed of light as all of you know of course if uh, the speed of light becomes large okay then you're going to break uh you're going to basically single out time with respect to space if you like so you're going to break Lorentz invariance and you're going to end up with a you get a non relativity So the expanded theory, let me say like that. So the expanded theory, so the, the consequence, as you will see, is that the expanded theory is a non relativistic theory. Okay. All right. Um, and so that's why actually we, this uh, is a topic here today uh, at the school, okay, where we're dealing with the non relativistic uh, well, aspects. What kinds of physics? And so this will basically be about normal relativistic gravity because we're doing expansion of GR. Note that I will not at all talk about that today, um, but you could take Maxwell, okay, and do exactly the same, or you could take you know the bosonic stream and do exactly the same. And actually, uh, there has been some recent work uh, on, on that as well. Okay. Uh, so this is not very peculiar to, to GR. You could do this in principle for any relativistic field theory where, from a physics point of view, the speed of light has to be hiding somewhere. Um, okay, so I'll give you a, a, an overview of what I plan to talk about uh, in a second. But so before I do that, um, let me just give you uh, a very short um, pointer to, to some references that I use to prepare these lectures. Um, okay, so well, the detailed references, I actually, there is something called a Slack channel uh, associated to this uh, school, which you can find, I guess, on the website. Um, a link to so there there is some uh, channel uh, associated to this lecture so I put there a link to a PDF file with the detailed uh, references I don't know maybe if ever these slides make it as a PDF to the website then we can have also add, add the references there um, but so well they basically uh, all come from just four uh, research groups or, or, or sets of researchers so the first and this is historically the first one that kind of talked about uh, this topic throughout in the language. So again, this of course, you know, how to get uh, Newtonian gravity and, and non the gravity out of GR is of course what well, goes back all the way to the beginnings of GR and Einstein and whatnot, but doing it in this particular way that now we call uh, the long the expansion, uh, that formalism basically goes back to Dockour, 
Uh, okay, so he has uh, four papers or something on, on this. Then this was very shortly uh, considered by Tishi and Flanagan uh, somewhere in 2010s, um, where they kind of uh, take this and not only talk about Newtonian gravity, but also about post Newtonian gravity. And then, uh, well, more, more recently, well, there was a lot of work done by, uh, I actually did it wrong, it's with Hansen, Hartung, and others. Okay. Um, and then also by myself uh, and some of my students. Okay. Um, so there are other, there is other related work. For example, as Jan yesterday mentioned, dealing about re algebra expansions that is partially motivated by the same thing. As I will shortly, I mean, slightly discuss, uh, there is a relation with post Newtonian expansion. So, there is, of course, a lot of work there that is related. But again, I will restrict basically to this particular formalism that uh, well, has been developed, developed, let's say, in, in, in this uh, set of, uh, of papers. Uh, okay. Let me just finally mention that um, the so Dennis Hansen, uh, he uh, did basically his PhD on this subject. And so, recently on the archive, he, you can find, or yeah, you can find his, uh, not on the archive, maybe but on, on Inspire, you can find his PhD thesis, which is really a very, very nice overview of the subject, contains, I would say, all up to date information. In addition to that, I believe there is also uh, soon going to be a review uh, on non relativistic gravity that will also partially uh, include uh, this stuff. Okay. Um, right. Okay, good. Um, so, okay, so what is the plan? Okay, um, well, let's see. So, again, uh, time is always uh, against us. So, so, we'll see how far we get. But uh, in an ideal world, I would like to discuss the following things. So there are basically going to be two parts, uh, okay? Where the first part is, if you like, uh, the introductory part, okay? Where I really want to kind of uh, spell out the basics. Um, so that's going to be, well, first, some motivation and context, okay? So why are we doing this and what are exactly, I mean, how should we put this best? And then, well, I want to talk about Newton Cartan gravity. Again, uh, many of you might be familiar with this, but I'm just assuming that there's also people in the audience that really are uh, entering the subject for the first time. So uh, I will uh, try to introduce this uh, basically from scratch. And then uh, that will finish the first part. But I, will, I mean, so this is in some sense uh, was already done by Dokur uh, all the way in the beginning, maybe not in, in exactly the language I use, but um, really. The, the main thing to understand first before we go anywhere else uh, is to understand how you get Newton Cartan gravity. Uh, okay, out of here. Okay, and again, uh, well, let me run a little bit ahead, maybe. So, the point is that, of course, all of you, I assume, has take, have taken some GR course, and most GR courses will talk about you know how you know you get the, the Newtonian approximation to GR. So all of you are somewhat familiar how you get Newtonian gravity out of GR, but the point is that essentially almost all textbooks, uh, they do this in a particular coordinate system. So you choose some adapted coordinates and then everything simplifies. So here, and this is kind of uh, particular also to the one of the six expansion has, has been developed uh, over the years, is that, and especially also uh, today in the lectures, we will keep a manifest covariant uh, setup, okay? So we will expand GR, without making any choice of coordinates, okay? And then automatically, as we will see, we'll end up with Newtonian gravity, you know, in a formulation which is coordinate uh, invariant, and that's exactly uh, newton cartan gravity, okay? Um, okay, so that would be the first uh, part, which is, if you like, the, the starting point, okay? Um, and then part two, and again, we will here see how much time I will have to do uh, various things, but so then, we can now come maybe into the more uh, recent development. Uh, so part of the recent development is kind of to clean up this discussion and then give it a slightly uh, nice and maybe geometric uh, form. But um, the, the real main advances uh, recently are, uh, well, as we will discuss, so uh, that actually there is more than just newton cartan gravity. Uh, so there's something called strong relativistic gravity. Uh, which is closely related to TT and C, twist distortion with Newton Cartan uh, gravity. 
Okay, and so well, I would like to discuss how you get that out of GR and what are some interesting, mainly conceptual uh, new insights uh, we, we have been able to get uh, out of that. And then uh, I hope I have also some time to finally end with some kind of more, uh, well, take a step back and uh, look at um, uh, a little bit more of the general structure uh, of the model C expansion. Okay. Um, oh, so that's kind of the plan. Let's see. Um, again, let me uh, make one point. As you see, so it's, it's very double uh, in some sense. So, first of all, uh, as I was playing this lecture, I really realized there's already a lot of things known, too much to ex explain everything in these lectures. At the same time, I still feel personally, this might be my personal opinion, but that in some sense it's early. Uh, you know, to lecture about this topic because I have the feeling that this topic is not yet fully mature in that there are things we don't understand or that the final nicest formulation of way to discuss things is not fully understood. Okay, so this is a, so I, I hope that everything that I will say is correct. I'm pretty sure about that, but it might not be the necessarily the most efficient or the most natural way uh, to discuss. And we will see some hints of that maybe uh, probably at the end. So again, this is an active uh, subject, which is again open uh, for exploration. Okay, so this is not at all a finished uh, topic. Okay, um, good. All right, so then let's move to uh, the first. Uh, so again, by the way, uh, please stop me at any point uh, if there are questions. So again, here, I mean, the subject is quite technical. So there are actually behind the scenes a lot of long calculations. So of course, I will not go through all the calculations in details. Uh, Many of them will be left as exercises, but I'll try to kind of really uh, take time to go through all the steps. Uh, okay, so please uh, interrupt me if things are not clear or if you have a question. Okay. Um, in the worst case, uh, if we don't make it through to this, maybe some of that can be also pushed to the discussion session. So, um, right. Okay, so the motivation and context. Um, Okay, so um, right, so there are some fundamental constants of nature, right? So we have C, G Newton, H bar, uh, and a couple of others, uh, Boltzmann constant, whatnot. But so I will ignore, uh, okay, H bar. So there are some interesting things to be said. Part of the motivation of this topic could even be found in quantum gravity, but uh, I will just uh, ignore that for today. Uh, okay. Um, right, and so well, the motivation is basically going to be uh, this diagram, which again, many of you might be familiar with. So we have two axes, um, and well, here we have uh, some velocity over C, and here we have, let's say, phi over C squared, where phi is uh, the gravitational potential. So here is actually G Newton hiding uh, some mass and some radius. Okay, so this is a uh, Gravitational potential. Okay. I mean, just one way to measure gravitational potential, something that I've mentioned. Okay. Uh, right. Now, these two parameters, okay, which are dimensional as today I define them here, uh, can be small or large. Okay. And depending if they're small or large, well, the physics will uh, have some slightly different uh, descriptions. So, um, Okay, so let's look at the different corners. So this is the corner here when the velocities are small and the gravitational potential is small uh, that we uh, well, encounter first in our lives as physicists. So here we have Newtonian gravity. Okay, um, and well, actually, as we know today, you can make small corrections to Newtonian gravity that allow you to uh, probe large and larger velocities. So really, maybe we can put here the theory of post Newtonian gravity, which also includes the first of these corrections to Newtonian gravity. But of course, this post Newtonian gravity also only makes sense as long as the velocity is small enough, because otherwise the series would diverge or would not be a good approximation. Okay, and then typically uh, in our again career as physicists, uh, we uh, jump immediately to the opposite corner uh, here, where gravity can be arbitrarily strong and uh, as relativistic as it wants, and you will find uh, general relativity. Okay. 
Um, right. Now, um, how do you go back from general relativity to uh, Newtonian gravity? Well, the route that is typically taken is to first assume weak gravitational potential. Okay, for example, when you discuss gravitational waves, uh, let's say, okay, you assume that you have some small fluctuations around some background, which is typically taken to be Minkowski. Okay, so you go down here and you end up uh, with a Q called, so let's see what color you give it, maybe orange. Okay, uh, again, you have, to, if you want, corrections. So you get here post uh, Minkowski and gravity, which by the way, is maybe if you're not familiar with this term, it's just some other name for if you like linearized gravity. So you linearize gravity around flat space. Okay, and then well, you can also include corrections. Okay, so that's basically what, what this is about. Okay, so here this is a relativistic theory. Okay, this is special relativity is there, but uh, gravity is treated perturbatively, in particular in uh, Newton's constant, okay, which is hiding here this potential. All right, uh, and so again, this this is the, the, the parts of GR that are very often discussed. And in some sense, uh, and there are indeed some, of course, some you know, people that we are quite sensible. So the point is that this corner has been somewhat uh, ignored, let's say, in the literature, especially compared to how much work has been done on those. And again, if you write like this, actually, you might in some sense say, well, that's automatic because, well, you see that if C is indeed large, as it is in nature, let's say, then automatically, anyways, this thing is also small. So setting C to infinity, well, would naturally kind of push you here. You could think, but that's not completely true, of course, because really there is no limit on this thing. There is no fundamental limit that tells you, like, you know, the, the gravitational potential can never exceed this or that value. Mathematically speaking, also, you know, GN is an independent parameter, so you could make it as large as you want. Um, so there could be situations where actually this gravitational potential here is of order C squared, and then, uh, okay you will not find yourself here. So C could be very large compared to the velocities you have. So you are in the non-relativistic regime. Okay, but if the gravitational potential is strong, well, you end up here. Okay, so what is uh, sitting here? Well, this large C expansion gives you some way uh, exactly to probe this. Uh, and maybe we can call this thing. Uh, so there are different names. Uh, I think uh, Yella and Niels would maybe call this called NRG, uh, non relativistic gravity. I'll call it SNRG, strong non relativistic gravity. So SNRG. Uh, so this is strong non relativistic gravity. Okay. Um, right. And so what is this thing? Well, as you will see, um, well, a part of it at least is given by. This distortional Newton Cartan gravity, again, something which we encounter today. Um, but we cannot really identify it with this. Why? Because it is just a subsector of it, as we'll also discuss. Okay, so there is it's definitely this distortional Newton Cartan gravity is definitely sitting here, but there is more there. Um, what is there? Well, uh, there is no full understanding, I guess, at the moment what is there, but one way. But these days, I like to think of it, and uh, all the way at the end of the lectures, we might get there is that this is actually a uh, post stationary regime. Okay. Okay. Um, but okay, um, again, this is something that well, we can talk about uh, at the end of the lectures if you have time, or maybe uh, during the discussion the session. Um, right. But so, well. So again, with this picture here, um, maybe I can then also again go back to the plan. So again, so this is just the large, so the large expansion that we will talk about today is basically just talking about this route here. Okay. So we are not going to make any assumptions about uh, phi over c squared. We're just going to make assumptions over v over c, if you like. Um, and uh, so well, the first thing to do, which we will do, is to kind of end up here but taking this route and then well uh, in the second part we'll actually kind of uh, stop here okay and about you look at this part. Um, okay um right so again well okay so maybe uh since my page is finished and i can just maybe say this in words so okay what i should stress here again is that so the post-Newtonian expansion which is used very much 
in all kinds of uh, applications, uh, phenomenology. Okay, this is a double expansion. Okay, it's an expansion both in the speed of light and in the gravitational potential. We're assuming small velocities and small gravitational potential. Okay, today we will only assume small velocities and no except nothing about the gravitational potential. Uh, okay, uh, and so again, this leads to this corner here, which uh, the large C expansion gives you a way to uh, discuss. Um, now, and so this could be possibly interesting for maybe phenomenological applications, but that's very much an open question. Okay, and I'm very sad that although I've been working on this stuff for a couple of years, uh, phenomenology is probably not my strongest uh, part, anyways. But uh, so so far, there has not really been any. Uh, direct application of this. Uh, as we will see, there are examples, okay? So it's not that I mean, you cannot do anything here, but it's not that they really give you that much new, uh, at the moment, that much new technology to compute things that haven't been computed before. But still, that's an open uh, issue. Uh, and so it, it's, I think, very interesting that maybe someday, okay, uh, discussions here could give you some improvement on post calculations uh, for technology. Okay? I will not cover that at all in this talk because I don't have much to say about it today, but still, I think as a motivation, uh, it's uh, quite important. Now, what uh, we did manage uh, to do already uh, with the work done in the literature, I mean, not just by myself, but by uh, uh, all of the other people as well, is that, well, we've been able to make some interesting conceptual breakthroughs uh, with some, uh, and I will talk about some of those uh, today. Okay, so for example, uh, what we'll see is that out of this will come a um, Lagrangian formulation of Newtonian gravity, okay, something which was actually not found uh, before. Um, second, we will see that the Schwarzschild geometry, okay, can actually be described exactly in this non relativistic setup, okay, meaning that you don't have, not as an approximation, but exactly, uh, which is also uh, quite uh, interesting and surprising because it really Kind of this allows us, uh, for example, if you think about the classical tests of GR, they are based on the Schwarzschild geometry. And so, actually, as you will see, many of these effects of GR that we might think are relativistic effects, they're really strong gravity effects rather than relativistic effects. So, again, this expansion allows us conceptually to separate strong gravity from non relativistic gravity. Um, and so, it also, I think, this is a, a rather nice a conceptual, uh, gives you new conceptual insights into GR. And gravity uh, in general. Okay, and then finally, the last piece of motivation is that because uh, uh, it's kind of built in to keep uh, general coordinate invariance, okay, well, we will end up with a non relativistic theory of gravity that will be by construction geometric, okay, because uh, we, we want it to be coordinate invariant. Uh, and so this also leads to uh, well, particular non relativistic uh, geometries and symmetries. Okay, and in, in that sense, uh, the one of the C expansion can be, can be some kind of lamppost, if you like, in the landscape of non relativistic theories. As, as Jan uh, uh, briefly mentioned yesterday, you know, pick your, pick your favorite non relativistic algebra, gauge it, and you'll find some kind of non relativistic gravity theory. But that could be a very exotic object. Okay, it's not completely clear if this uh, shows up directly uh, in you know outside uh, your room. Of course, this might be interesting for other applications like quantum gravity, holography, maybe even coupling to condensed matter. So these exotic gravities might be uh, of interest, you know, physical interest. I'm not saying that, but they are not you know the non-relativistic gravity that we experience. Let's say. Uh, here or close to a black hole or something like that. Okay, so um, what we'll talk about today is that actual gravity, the one coming from GR. Uh, but apart from its applications to GR, it also serves, let's say, as a leading example of uh, in, in this, let's say, landscape of exotic theories. And indeed, uh, as I mentioned, some new insights were gained also uh, from this example. So also from that point of view, and especially from the point of view of the school, uh, I think that's that's interesting. Okay, enough about motivation. So I will you stop uh, quite a little bit of time. So uh, let's get to it then. Unless there are comments or questions. Okay. Um, so then let me first talk about Newton Cartan gravity. Okay, so uh, we for a moment forget about GR. 
We're just going to talk about newton cathode gravity first, and then uh, in the second part, we'll talk about how you can get this from here. Okay. Right. So interestingly, it was Newton, but it was Einstein that claimed that uh, gravity is uh, geometry, right? Um, right. Now, uh, so there are two aspects uh, to this statement. Uh, the first is uh, philosophical. Philosophy. Maybe I can spell this very bad. There's an H missing, I guess. Okay, so for that. Uh, right. So, philosophically speaking, what does this mean? Well, this originates from the equivalence principle, uh, which again uh, can have various formulations, but uh, for today, I'll just uh, focus on what I think is the main point, which is that the statement that inertial mass equals uh, gravitational mass. Again, well, this is called a principle, but this is actually also just a fact of life that you can check experimentally. Uh, okay. All right. Um, okay, so why uh, is this a philosophical basis of, of gravity plus geometry? Well, because inertial mass equals uh, the gravitational mass, well, everything has inertial mass, so everything must couple also to gravity. Okay, so there must, everything is coupled to gravity. Gravity is universal. Nothing escapes gravity, that's the first thing. Second, gravity is universal. Okay, uh, it doesn't care I mean, about uh, Different particles. Why? Because again, out of the equation of the motion of motional particles, on one side you have the gravitational mass providing the force, on the other side you have the inertial mass. Okay, uh, pro, uh, and so to find the motion of the equation, they drop out. Okay, so actually the motion is independent of the mass, meaning that all particles, independent of their mass, move uh, the same. And so we really can think of their motion as determined by the geometry, which is universal. Okay, so again, uh, is universality. Okay, uh, now, of course, uh, the nice thing about Einstein is that he wasn't only very strong philosophically, but also pretty good technically. So technically, what he then uh, told us is that, well, the gravitational field, as all of you know, so I'm of course preaching to the choir, but uh, is uh, a Riemannian metric. Metric, yes, um, right. And not only did he realize that uh, you know the gravitational fields are Riemannian metric, which are pretty really cool. He even gave us then the equations how you should do physics with this. So he said, okay, uh, r mu nu equals uh, t mu nu. Uh, I could write in terms of the Einstein tensor, but for today I like to occasionally write in terms of the Ricci tensor. Uh, so this is okay and then uh, we also have uh, well, the particle motion is determined by uh, by this equation which is a geodesic equation I don't know. okay so uh, again uh, well this equation tells us that mother determines the geometry okay and this equation tells us that the geometry determines the motion of okay. so these two equations together you could call uh, let's say the, the geometric basis of, of general uh, relativity Okay. Right. Okay. So good. So this is about GR, but wasn't I supposed to talk about newton cartan gravity, right? Well, the point is that, uh, well, I mean, this philosophical observation is also true for Newtonian gravity. Okay. Right. Uh, it's also true in the Newtonian gravity that the inertial mass is equal to the gravitational mass. And so again, everything moves the same under, under gravity. So there should also then be a geometric basis of Newtonian gravity. Right. But uh, apparently Newton uh, didn't realize that. Okay. It's hard to blame. We already had the first figure out calculus, the one differential geometry. So um, let's not blame him. Um, but so the equations, well, I don't know if he wrote them like this, but so the way we are typically uh, told them is again, well, again, also technically, again, we have two equations, okay, matter determines, well, not the geometry, but the Newtonian potential, and then the Newtonian potential uh, determines, uh, let me actually put an I here, uh, determines uh, how uh, 
the, uh, the particle moves. Okay, this is just Newton's second law with a force given by the gradient of the gravitational potential. And again, the key is that normally, right, as all of you know, there are two m's here, okay, but they, the m drops out, and so, uh, right. Okay, good. So um, these equations, which are Newton's equations, well, our philosophical insight tells us that there should be a geometrical formulation of this. How do you find it? Well, if you know that it should be there, it's very easy to find it. Um, okay, so let's first geometrize the second equation, okay? Um, and when I'm gonna geometrize the second equation, you will say, okay, but that's just, that's an empty statement, that's just too easy. Um, but let's do it anyways. Well, I will write this as x dot of u plus exactly the same equation as above, okay? I can always write as a geometric equation, as a geodesic equation, but I'll just identify, okay, uh, the following. Okay, I will say this thing is equal to uh, what you see written there, j phi, and all of the components zero. Okay, <laughs> I'm just telling you that. Well, just think of this as a connection, and then the point that wait, what happened to this uh, velocity here? Well. If I take the dot to, to be the time variable, then this just becomes, you know, x zero is t, so it just becomes dt dt, they just become one, and I just get literally this. And then in it, why didn't I get all, all kinds of other stuff? Well, just I put all the connection components to zero, okay? So, right. Uh, I've geometrized the Newton's second law for gravity, great, but it really feels a little bit cheap, you know? Now comes, I think, the key point that is actually it's not cheap, and that really there is something quite deep going on here, is that now, okay, and so here I will not do the derivation, but so now it is, if you like, well, it's not a miracle, but um, well, it is, of course, a difference principle uh, in some sense, I guess, at work, is that if you now compute R, okay, you knew, okay, so you have a connection here, so you can compute, it's just an affine connection, you can compute its Riemann tensor and then Ricci tensor, and then you find that indeed, it satisfies also exactly the same Einstein equation where if you do the computation, you will find that indeed RTT is nothing but, again, I might be using a sign, but forgive me for that. It's just a Laplacian of the Newtonian potential while all other components are zero. And then again, uh, well, T mu nu here, then you will just identify with uh, what the so TTT should be rho. And then again, all of the components zero. Sorry for having this almost top of the page. But, uh, okay, so actually, indeed, uh, we have, uh, you can geometrize uh, Newtonian gravity, and this is how it goes. Okay, um, so that's, uh, and again, the, the reason is that the equivalence principle is as true non relativistically as it is uh, relativistic. Um, right. Um, Okay, now, so, um, so Newtonian gravity, expressed in terms of the connection, Okay, an affine connection. So that, that it shares that at least with general relativity. But still, there are uh, two kind of issues. First issue, uh, we uh, formulate the connection in a preferred coordinate system. Right? Um, so I gave you the connection, but it was uh, in a particular coordinate system. So is there some kind of coordinate independent characterization of this connection? Okay, that's the first question or objection to. Well, what we know from GR is that, okay, there is a connection, but there's actually something which is more fundamental than the connection, which is the metric, okay? Um, so, um, right, so what is, uh, is there a kind of metric or geometry, okay? Because again, uh, this connection allows you to write this equation, but it does not give the full notion of geometry. Is there some kind of metric underlying 
uh, this connection. Okay. And so, of course, while well, these two objections or questions are related, and the answer to them, okay, uh, so answering this is exactly what leads us to the contract. Uh, Geometry. Okay. All right. So um, let me uh, introduce that. Um, so, what is Newton Cartan geometry? So, again, yeah, I will now pull it out of the blue and then you will see everything here. So, Newton Cartan geometry is the following instead of having a Riemannian metric, uh, we have a palm U, which is a one form. And we have HV mu, which is a symmetric uh, rank to tensor. Uh, okay, and by the way, it should be everywhere more vanishing if you really want to be correct. Uh, and they kind of play together in the way that this one from tau spans the kernel of this uh, tensor, meaning that, well, they have this orthogonality, if you like, uh, condition, uh, okay, uh, that's what it is. Okay, and so these are called, this is called a Newton-Cartan structure. If you want to really understand what this geometry means precisely, you can ask Jose uh, at some point and I'll kind of nice things to tell you. Uh, okay, but so for us, uh, this will be sufficient. Okay, so in this little cartan structure, and now, well, how, how does the connection come into play? Well, how does the connection come into play in GR? You start from a metric, and then you say, well, I'm going to look for a compatible torsionless connection. Okay, so a la uh, well, GR or Riemannian geometry, uh, look for a compatible torsionless. Connection. Okay. Um, and then this will turn out to be well, exactly this uh, connection that we use to reformulate Newtonian gravity. Yes. Uh, okay. So, uh, what does that mean? Well, I guess most of you know what it means. Uh, okay. It means that the covariant derivative with respect to this connection of tau is zero, and also the covariant derivative of this h uh, is zero. Okay. So, that means the compatibility. Um, now, there are two important uh, comments to be made. The first, uh, more important than the other, so let me put it in color. So, the first important comment is that, contrary to, again, I'm writing here GR because it's passing to heat of Riemannian geometry. Okay, so GR will be of Lorentzian geometry or whatnot. So, okay, uh, gamma is not unique. Okay. So in GR, we have kind of been done. You give me the metric, that is unique, uh, compatible uh, torsionless connection, the Levitch Vita connection, and then everything falls. Okay. So here, that's not the case. So uh, this is actually what makes that so interesting. So I'll discuss that in a minute. So the connection, we need to specify it uh, extra. Two, in the way things are formulated here, uh, which will be true for the first part of the lecture, is that, well, you'll demand this connection to be torsionless. Now, that has a, an interesting, so this is maybe not as important, but still important enough to point out. So, no color, but you can write it out. Okay, um, well, because uh, the connection uh, is torsionless, uh, it follows well. So, I can rewrite zero like this, right? It's a, uh, uh, it's I just anti symmetrize this equation. Now, but because the connection is torsionless, it drops out of this equation because it's symmetric. And so, I find uh this condition okay uh so it means that if actually for such a compatible torsionless connection to exist okay we will need tau to be closed okay and so this will be part of our definition then of newton cartan john okay okay and so this is the torsionless version of newton cartan geometry which again i kind of put here by hand uh, but it's a standard thing to do and we'll first discuss it like, like this um Okay, um, right, and so we can we have kind of the, if you like, the first, uh, there, are, there are many formulations of Newton Cartan. Okay, so, uh, so the first formulation, I'm going to only mention, I think, two, but the first formulation then, okay, would be 
in terms of what? Well, we have tau mu, h mu nu, and we have a connection uh, satisfied. Okay, and they satisfy all of these constraints and rules that I uh, spell out above. Okay, so this defines Newton Cartan geometry, at least for me then, at the moment. And then uh, if you then use this connection to write down the equations we had on the previous page, uh, so that they were so sloppy here, but uh, again, the geodesic equation and just uh, the Einstein equation, if you like, or the Cartan equation, okay, you have a theory of uh, non relativistic gravity, which is nothing but Newtonian gravity uh, in disguise. Uh, I will mention this uh, later, but let me may already point out now that actually the Newtonian potential is sitting only in gamma. It is not, it doesn't have any trace in H and tau. So it's really, in some sense, well, the Newtonian potential is part of this non-uniqueness of gamma. Okay, so it's here, but not here. Uh, we'll see that uh, more explicitly when I go to the second formulation. Now, let me see. Um, maybe this is, uh, I, I'm supposed to only have 45 minutes, right? So maybe it's a good moment to stop. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, exactly. Yes, so, Dito, yes. Exactly. So let me, Very good timing, yeah. Okay, good. let me stop. Oh, sorry, I, had to... I don't know about that because I was actually hoping to finish the whole discussion of Newton Cartan gravity before the break, but uh, that will not work. So, but still, uh, I'll go to the second formulation, uh, well, which is closely related, this one uh, after the break. Though. So, let me stop here. If there are questions, of course. Yes, uh, let's take some questions. Are there no questions? Also, no. Yes, sure, sure, yes. Maybe you're going to mention this later, but um, the ambiguity in this in this connection is a two form. So is that uh, later to be interpreted as the field strength of the funny mu? No, yeah, so that you have to wait uh, ten minutes. Ah, okay, right. You're going to okay. Yeah. All right. Well, yes. Um, yes. Thanks. So yes. So also apart from questions, uh, again, uh, you can also give feedback. So again, I'm trying to just go through everything uh, step by step. I hope I'm not, I mean, if everybody's familiar with all of this, then uh, I can go a bit fast. But at the same time, I think, yeah, well, let me try not to rush things for this for those people that, uh, that are not too familiar with this. Okay, so, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so, um, uh, so shall we have a 10 minutes break and resume at 11 o'clock? Yeah. Okay, good. thank you. Thank you. Again, I mean, yeah, I, I'm actually quite fine. So I'll just hang around here if there are questions during the break. I'm also happy. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want to stop recording. Ah, uh, I oh, yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>